They're as good a group, as appreciative of each other and as respectful of each other as I've probably come across. But you've got to try and find the line between you get on fantastically well and your friends, but you have to win. Sometimes that line between enjoying what you're doing and being productive is one that you miss out on. And if you miss out on it, guess what? You're not around too long. As the 2021 season entered the home stretch, Nashville SC had again established themselves as one of the league's best. Sitting second in the Eastern Conference, they had improved upon their 2020 performance. It was a success that continued to surprise, led by a coach who made a practice of defying the odds. I've been playing certainly back in England since I was a kid like a lot of young kids. It was a dream to try and be a professional. I was lucky enough to get an apprenticeship at Fulham. But at 24, I had to retire through um, a very bad broken leg. My dad was academy director at the time at Wimbledon Football Club. He said to me one day, listen, you know, would you be interested in getting on the, the coaching ladder. I said, OK, yeah, that would be great. Expecting you know, one of the more senior youth groups. He said, OK, well, what about the under-12s? It actually turned out to be one of the best moves for me in my coaching world to try and articulate and organise and be ready for any sort of eventuality, really. My name is Steve Guppy. I'm the first assistant for the Nashville Soccer Club. My history with Gary goes back a long way. We were playing in a reserve game at Welling United, and this guy turned up called Gary Smith. Steve will tell you that I spent the whole game um, barracking him and shouting at him, which wasn't true. Within five minutes, he was moaning at me, and I was like one of the main, you know, one of the starters for the first team, so I was a bit put out by this new lad coming in. But it turns out, all these years on, he's still moaning at me now. We formed a very strong relationship from that point. Steve went on, obviously, to have a wonderful career in the Premier League and play for England, and I didn't. When the opportunity came to work together, it was incredible how it all worked out. I mean, a long time ago now, Colorado. Gary ended up getting the head job and it kind of panned out that I um, joined up with him and it was fantastic. We went into that second year in 2010. The hope was we were going to have a good run and incredibly, we obviously won the whole thing. So it, it, was, it was a wonderful time. There were some difficulties behind the scenes and after getting into the playoffs in 2011 as well and getting knocked out by Kansas over two legs. Um, you know, I, I ended my time there. After the peaks and valleys of Colorado, Smith returned to England. He was appointed manager of League One side Stevenage, went back to the States for a short stint in Atlanta before finally having a real second chance with a team just getting their first. I think one of the best things that I've gotten to know because I've played with him for four years is how much he cares about his players. Um, you know, he really takes the time to, to understand the player on and off the field. Gary is, is one of the best man managers I've seen. I've worked with some great managers. I've been really fortunate. People like Martin O'Neill, Roy Keane. You know, and I put Gary up there with these guys. He really is that good. His style of play works. We get wins and I have friends on other teams who are like, this man's a tactician. And then off the field, you know, he's funny. He's, uh, he has great banter. Um, you know, I think I think it, I had to warm up to it because it's coming from coming from England and everything. Well, first of all, he speaks the same language as me, unlike a lot of people around this place. So it's great to have a fellow Brit alongside. He, at least somebody understands my jokes. <laughs> but um, he ticks so many boxes for me because of as much as being a great coach, which is 
obviously the number one thing on your sheet. He's also a great person and actually somebody who wants to work collaboratively with you know, myself and Mike and others, and that's not always the case. When I think about his ability to be successful last year, uh, that was not a surprise to any of us. He does a great job in preparing week to week and not only game planning for an opponent, trying to identify what their weaknesses are, but I think as a communicator, he's really effective in making sure that all of his players know what their roles are. And I think he does a great job of that. This is a pressing exercise that will be physically demanding. Always what you want as a player is when you cross that white line, you want to know where you're supposed to be at all times of the pitch, what's expected of you. If it goes in, get playing again and you're off. You don't want to blind them with too much science, especially on match day. But the work that goes in leading up to the week, you know, hopefully leaves them with at least one thing less to worry about. Are we ready? You got it right? Go! Come on, pace, press, press, press! Well done, Jack! Get his head down! Come on, you're not good! Come on, nearest man! Press the ball! The effort he puts in, he is all in. He is all in. That's why he wants to be a head coach. He always wanted to be a head coach. Squeeze in! Brilliant! Yes, Jack! I'm amazed at the amount of effort he's willing to go to make sure he, he gets that win. Fly on! Fly on! Fly on! I'm in John! I think we've done an awful lot of hard work to try and get the right individuals here and then it's a matter of moulding them into a shape and a style that is going to help us throughout any given season. Good Taylor! Excellent shot! Aye. Excellent! The other thing that has a huge impact on any group is of course results. Years ago I was at a coaching school and the instructor said you haven't really coached until you've been fired. This is a profession where your benchmarkings are front and center for everyone to see. At the end of the day, where it's a result business, you have outcome of wins and losses, then you have the process of how to win and how not to lose. And I think Garrett did a great job of not only being able to generate results from a week to week basis, but he's grown so much from his experiences in Colorado to where he is today help him have this really well-rounded approach to man management, to tactics on the field. The managers and the coaches that I've been around have certainly given me the opportunity to take some of their qualities and their abilities and try and just adapt them into the way that I work. And there have been some bad experiences that I can draw on and say, you know what, I certainly don't want to fall into that trap. So any experience is a good experience, it's just how you use it. He's always uplifting. He's always trying to improve me and make me better. The person that I was in 2018 when I came here is definitely not the person I am today. And I know that's due to Gary and all the hard work and everything that they've put into me and they've never given up on me. There's a wonderful group of players. There's just as good a group of staff. And I think we're building some some history and some experiences now that every team needs. And the hope is that you know, we can carry this form on not only to prolong this season, but strong start to next year that will take us into a new stadium where we hope that we can start to build some storylines that everyone looks back on and says this is what Nashville and their new stadium is all about. On the next Dream Together, we all know we need to be in a great shape, that we need to be fit. We use a lot of technology. We like to assess things, we like to test things. We want to make sure that what we are doing follows the latest sports science. 